What advice do you have for people with food addictions or who, or who are overweight, sick, and lack motivation? Many people have tried to diet and eat, and eat healthy only to fail and just give up. You go in order, Dr. McDougall, Dr. Clapper, and Dr. Espinosa. You know, that's, that's a hard thing to, people ask me often, who, who do I think will follow the type of diet that I recommend? Or the type of diet that's recommended by the bulk of the people in this conference? He froze. Uh, I think we did, Dr. McDougall, did, you did freeze. Go ahead, Dr. McDougall. Oh, okay, Dr. Clapper, why don't you take over and then we'll go back to Dr. McDougall. Uh, well, um, you know, it's been an, uh, an age old observation that most vegans get skinny, they get lean, you know, well, why is that? And uh, I'm not saying you, you wanna be underweight, but most, most people adopt a whole, whole food plant-based diet, uh, wind up with a fairly lean, slender body. Why is it? Because the majority of the food that's going down their gullet, the salads and soups and steamed veggies, are mostly fiber and water. The, the, um, the calorie density of the food is so low that if you fill your belly up with a, with a bowl of vegetable soup and a big salad, some steamed greens, you, you've eaten a couple hundred calories maybe. And, and that's the beauty of a whole food plant-based diet. It's guilt-free eating. You don't have to count carbs. You don't have to count calories. Eat till you're full. And as long as they're whole foods, you know, if you're getting into the potato chips and the baked goods, that, that's a whole other game. But if you're eating whole plant foods, you know, eat all you want and you're going to wind up getting lean. Be careful with the nut butters and, uh, and the baked goods, you know, flour products, oils, uh, uh, dried fruits. Those can be plant-based saboteurs. But if you're eating whole foods like they grew in the garden, you know, rice, I mean, uh, tomatoes and beans and uh, cucumbers, uh, you're going to get pretty lean uh, just because of the nature of the food. It's low calorie density food. So um, if, if someone goes back for a fourth bowl of vegetable soup, who cares? You're going to pee out the water and poop out the fiber. It doesn't matter a heck of a lot. So, um, so uh, I would tell them, relax. You focus on healthy plant-based foods. You focus on uh, you know, high fiber foods that satisfy you and the weight will take care of itself. The vast majority of people uh, who whole, maintain a whole food plant-based diet for six, 12, 18 months, they wind up uh, at, at an ideal body weight. So uh, I, I do very little weight counseling with most of my patients. Um, and um, and I, I do want to give some deference to Dr. Espinosa's uh, plight and position that he's dealing with a population of pretty unhealthy folks who don't have a lot of food consciousness, it sounds. And, and he's right. He can't, you know, from day one, you must go whole food plant-based and never eat another piece of meat again. Uh, humans aren't going to do that. And if people need to take a few months to taper it off to get their meat eating down to once or twice a week, beats once or twice a day, uh, and uh, and then, but but I work with you. The idea is to wean yourself off of this over the next X number of months, whatever it chooses to be, and work with them to come up with nice substitutes, etc. Nice high protein uh, lentils and uh, lentil stews and bean burritos, etc. Um, then uh, I have no problem with them easing off of that. Uh, you know, it's not an all or nothing thing. And I, I think a lot of that salmon notwithstanding is, is what he's, uh, you know, he's trying to deal with there. And, and I give him credit for uh, being uh, sensitive to his, uh, uh, to his patient's uh, food patterns there. You gotta, you gotta work with where you're at. He's doing a good job with that. I appreciate that. Um, look, I again, I, I I do look at the research. It's not like I'm pulling information out of the air. I've read Dr. Campbell's book, great book, China Study. Um, but I look at everything as a preponderance of research, and I make decisions to my patients, even what I wouldn't necessarily do, because who cares about what my dogma or bias opinion is about a diet or anything? So what they care about, what's important for them for the condition that they have. And I spent a lot of time on looking at it, that information. And as you can tell, I'm not really um, emotionally attached to diet that much. I just care to do whatever's right for patients and to do whatever's right for myself. I think that overconsumption of energy is the primary problem. I think we overeat, period, end of story. Yes, if you're eating broccoli all day, you still have a very low calorie count because there's very little calories and broccoli and vegetables, of course, but that's what more, that's not, people don't snack on broccoli. 
Right? We, we have to bring it to the real world. I mean, with the exception probably of Dr. Kapler and Dr. McDougall and a few others that are listening, people are not snacking on celery. They're, they're snacking, when they snack, they snack on, you know, other things, um, uh, beef chews, which I don't support, right? So I, I have to, my job is to get them from where they're at to a better place so that we can create, if, it's, if it deals with prostate cancer, so we can create a micro environment in their body that's hostile to cancer, um, which low inflammation and all these other things are a big part of that. And based on my research, I give them that kind of protocol and, it, um, uh, and that's that. Um, but I didn't answer your question, Steve. And since we don't have Dr. McDougall, um, maybe, oh, okay. Um, we can't see you. At least I can't well, see hold you. Hold on a minute. I had a complete computer failure. Believe me. Oh, hey, Steve, what, um, can you repeat the question? I just want to make sure I'll give you 30 seconds. I need to answer your question specifically. I'm sorry. Am we, I back with you? Yeah, you are. Yeah. Right. Um, I said, what advice do you have for people with food addictions or who are overweight, sick, and lack motivation? Yeah. Many people have tried to diet and eat healthy only to fail and just give up. That was so can, I, can, can I, um, can I, I'll address that specific question. I, I believe there's no bigger addiction than food addiction. Yeah. People will say, well, no, I was addicted to alcohol and that's much bigger and more serious. Yeah, I agree. I was addicted to something, but in terms of nobody, when you're eating a big plate of food, nobody's going to look at you and say, Hey, stop that. You need to go to uh, overeaters anonymous. No one is ever going to say that. So in terms of feasibility and, um, and the addictive nature of, of course, processed foods, um, I think that's a, that's a huge problem. Okay. And, and so forth. So how do you get them? Um, that's a whole story. And I don't, I don't think we have enough time because I do deal with people that are food addicted. And my main question is, you know, what's your purpose? What's your, what's your why in life? Because that's going to get you to say, I'm not going to eat that cookie. Um, if you want to see your daughter grow up and, and walk her down the wet aisle when she gets married, then you need to stop eating that cookie or overeating those cookies. Um, so it's, it's a matter of what's your why? as opposed to, you know, I'm not, because again, it's an addictive behavior. And as it relates to being overweight, that's a simple calculation of, of ca uh, calorie um, deficit, calorie deficit, more exercise, care, care, careful to know simple carbohydrates and people will lose weight. Here's the deal though. People out there are slim fat slim fat. So just because they're losing weight, yeah, they'll lose some fat, but a lot of that is water. They're losing, initially, they're losing a lot of water. So I, I think people need to measure with whether some uh, a DEXA scan or something, they need to measure their body composition okay. to see how much of their body is fat versus muscle. And that is uh, a, certainly a concern of mine. I've seen people, uh, many people that are unhealthy, advanced prostate cancer that are slim. I don't know why I can, I cannot oversimplify why, but I look at their body composition as like 35% fat, even though they're slim. So I think there, that, that's an issue that needs to be addressed. Mm -hmm.